Hi friends, hope you are doing well. So today I'm going to discuss lecture seven on our course and this topic is going to be isentropic flow. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, whenever we have air moving at high speed and it slows down, its temperature rises. So this is which is seen in physics and the thing which comes out of this phenomena is that now we need to use the laws of thermodynamics to get the equations when we are dealing with this kind of high speed flow. So we will see that the high speed equations, they will involve temperature at two different points. Until now we had only the equation of state which linked pressure, density and temperature at one point. But now we are going to have equations linking the temperature at two points and this is because there is going to be a change in temperature as the velocity changes and remember all the things we are going to discuss in today's lecture are only applicable to high speed flow. So let us take a brief review of thermodynamics. You may have studied thermodynamics before in chemistry or physics or some other course. But this is going to be a slightly different perspective on the first law of thermodynamics. So let's look at a system here. So this is a system which has unit mass of air. And so there is a system boundary and there is the surrounding. So essentially that is the differentiation between whatever is out there that's known as the surrounding and whatever is inside is known as the system. And we say this is unit mass of air because it's convenient and it lets us do certain things. For example, we can define the relationship between density and volume very simply if we know that mass is only going to be one. Now what we bring into this system is delta Q and this is basically heat. So what we can do is we can add heat to the system. Also, if we were to apply some force on the system and there is some motion in the system, the motion is some distance s, then what's going to happen is that we are going to do work on the system. So let's look at this system once again. Essentially, the system has something known as internal energy associated with it. And we use the symbol E to denote that. And this energy happens because there are all these molecules of air present here and these molecules of air are moving around and so they have a cumulative energy which can be totaled up to be the internal energy of the system. Now if we want to increase the internal energy of the system there are only two things we can do. We can add heat delta Q to this system or we can do work delta W on the system. So this leads to a very general way we can write the first law of thermodynamics and that is dE is delta Q plus delta W. So that's the most generic form of the first law. Now we are going to start to simplify each of these terms in ways such that they are more useful for us. So what we are going to do is consider this small piece here. Let us call this dA. So this is essentially an area and what we do is we apply a pressure on this. So let's now increase it and see it here. So there is some pressure here, there is a dA. And now what's going to happen is that because air is compressible, there is going to be some motion inside here. So this pressure which is applied on dA is going to push this surface inwards by a distance s. And now if we go back to our physics, we know that work done on the system would be the force into the distance. So the force is P into dA. So remember pressure into the cross section. So it's applied here on top of this point. So pressure into dA is the force and S is the distance moved here. So we can say that work done on the system is P dA into S. Now let us presume constant pressure on this system. And if we do that, then what we can do is we can write this delta W in this form. So essentially we can integrate this on all the areas which are present on that system. Now, why we are assuming constant pressure is that we can then get P out of this integral. So I'm able to bring P out of this integral. 
So I'm left with this STA integral here. Now I define this STA as negative of dV or I can define dV as negative of integral SDA. And if I do that, I get this fact that delta W is negative P dV. So we have now got volume here B. V is the volume of the system. So you can see that clearly here. It would be the area into the distance moved. So that's essentially dV. Now we can write the thermodynamic law as dE is delta Q plus delta W. That becomes delta Q minus P dV. So essentially that lets us get the delta W in this form. So I can immediately rewrite this equation as delta W is dE plus P dV, where I simply took delta W here, I took dE here, and I put plus dV here, just changing the way the equation is written. So this is one equation we now have. Now let us look at one more way we can look at the first law, and that is using the concept known as enthalpy. And enthalpy is essentially defined as E plus PV. So we use the notation H to define this. H is E plus PV. Now I can immediately differentiate this equation. So I get DH is DE plus PDV plus VDP, okay, from chain rule. And I can immediately use the fact which we discussed in the previous lecture or previous slide is that delta Q was DE plus PDV. So that was just another way to talk about the first law. So this part here, this simply becomes delta Q. So I can write delta Q plus VDP. So I get one more equation here. I can write delta Q as DH minus VDP. Okay, just I change this equation. So delta Q is DH minus VDP. So I have these two equations here, which I have put in blue. They are both delta Q, and one of them relates delta Q to E, and one of them relates it to H. And now in the right-hand side here, I have better looking equations or equations which are more amenable to our study of aerodynamics because we have a good idea about pressure and volume. Now, these equations are better, but still we have the presence of dH and delta Q and dE, and these are not easy to get from general formulas in air. So what we are going to do is that we are going to make some approximations and then get these values using certain concepts known as specific heat, and that is going to let us apply these equations to air. So let's look at a constant volume process. In that process, delta Q is CV dt. And a constant pressure process is delta Q is CP dt, where CV is the specific heat at constant volume and CP is the specific heat at constant pressure. So essentially, these are certain properties which air has. And so what we can do is we can write this value here. Now. If we now look at the first law using this concept of specific heat, if we have a constant volume process, we can write delta Q is dE plus PdV. And this is simply going to become equal to dE because in a constant volume process, dV is going to be zero. And therefore, I'm going to get dE equals CV dT. That's again from the definition. And then I have a constant pressure process. There I can use the enthalpy-based equation. Delta Q is dH minus VDP. That will become dH because constant pressure process dP is zero. And this is going to give me dH equals Cp dT. So these two equations are also essentially ways of writing the first law. But now I have been able to write these in terms of specific heat for a constant volume and a constant pressure process. Now, at T is zero, remember E is zero and H is zero. So that's going to be the absolute zero. And so I'm going to, in that situation, get E is CVT and H is CPT. Now, 
The thermodynamic law was derived using constant pressure and constant volume assumptions, but in general, I would say that they are valid universally. And if you are very interested in looking at derivations which are more generalized, you will find those in thermodynamics books in college and high school and so on. So the form which we used was an easy way to get these equations. So that's what we did here. Now what these laws or this law helps us do is that it's going to help us relate P, rho, T and V for compressible flow. Remember pressure, density, temperature and velocity. And now we are going to look at all these for compressible flow, which is essentially high speed flow. Because do remember that when we are going at high speed, flow is compressible. Compressible means that if we apply some kind of pressure on this system, then that system goes through that motion, which we denoted by S. So that is the sign that the liquid here or the fluid here is compressible. So now we are going to come to a very important flow and that is known as the isentropic flow, which was the title of this particular lecture. And an isentropic flow is one which is both reversible and adiabatic. Now we are going to define these two processes. So firstly, an adiabatic process is one in which there is no heat coming in. So what it means mathematically is that delta Q equals zero. And also a reversible process is one where there is no friction or dissipation. So these are two very important facts which should take place in the isentropic flow. Now, when you think about these two assumptions which we made in the previous slide, that there is no heat coming in and there is no friction, you may think that this may not be a very practical process, but actually you can use this kind of flow on many real situations. For example, flow on top of an airfoil, flow through wing tunnels and so on. And this is possible because except when you are very near the surface, far out there or generally slightly at some distance out there from the airfoil section or from the surface, the flow is pretty much an isentropic flow because you don't have friction and also you do not have heat coming in. But do remember that when you are at the airfoil surface and very near the airfoil surface, you do have friction effects which are substantial. There is something known as a boundary layer, which we are going to discuss later in this course. And so what happens, the fluid is going to slow down. Whatever the level of smoothness you have on the airfoil, there is still going to be friction present here. So near the surface, friction effects are substantial, but outside, it's not so. So in many situations, we have to apply equations at some points in the fluid, which are at some distance from the body which has been placed there and in those cases we can use the isentropic flow equations which we are going to derive. So now let's look at the first law for this kind of process. So again like I mentioned for isentropic flow delta Q is zero and therefore if we take the first law we can write delta Q is dE plus PdV which is same as dH minus VdP. These are both going to be equal to zero. So this is where the assumption of isentropic flow helps us to greatly simplify this equation here. Now you clearly see that I can then easily write these equations here. So the first equation will give me DE is negative PDV. The second equation gives me DH is VDP. And so now what I do is I know that of course DE is also CVDT dh is cpdt from some of the equations we derived before by using the definition of the specific heats. Now one of the things I can clearly see now is that I have two equations here and if I simply were to divide these two equations I would get rid of dt for example and I would also not have de and dh in my formulation so that's what we do we divide these two equations and so we get this equation here that dp by p is negative cp by cv dv by v. So again these are all coming from the first law of thermodynamics. The assumption having been made here is that delta q is equal to zero. So that's something which we have used here. So through this 
mathematical jugglery which we did here we have got rid of e h and q which were all these things which were linked to the concepts coming from thermodynamics and now we are dealing with concepts with which we are very familiar with in the fluid mechanics part of the world so this equation is very important equation that's why i have put it in yellow here you can remember this equation dp by p is negative cp by cv dv by v and this cp by cv is something which is specific to a given gas we are considering now what actually happens is that cp by cv is a constant value and this is known as gamma and the value is 1.4 for air so i can easily write this equation then as dp by p is negative gamma dv by v so this value cp by cv is known as the specific heat ratio this is fortunately a decent number for air and so we can very easily remember this and use this formula everywhere now some people even define isentropic flow is something which satisfies this equation and so that's something you will find in some books but do remember that this equation is essentially nothing but an expression of the laws of thermodynamics provided certain assumptions are made here so that's what is giving us this isentropic flow relationship which is going to be very important because it's going to help us relate the pressure the volume and also we'll see velocity and so on in a very simple manner between two points so we are going to couple it with the Euler equation and then we are going to get some relationships for velocity also in terms of the compressible equation for Bernoulli or Bernoulli's compressible equation so let's summarize today's lecture now we see that thermodynamics is needed for high speed flow because thermodynamics deals with the changes in temperature because of pressure volume etc and we also saw that isentropic flow which means that there is no heat exchange there is no friction leads to the expression of the law of thermodynamics in the simple form dp by p is negative gamma dv by v and gamma is 1 0.4 for air which is the ratio of the specific heat cp by cv so that's something to remember for our course here so that's the lecture for today so today's lecture you certainly now know some important concepts such as you know the law of thermodynamics how it leads to the isentropic flow relationship and also certain new concepts such as the specific heat and the ratio of specific heat the value of gamma for air being 1.4 and so now we have that good looking equation which we are going to use in our next lecture to discuss about the compressible Bernoulli equation which is going to link two different points and it's also going to bring temperature into the system so i'll end this lecture here and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then